If you were to see this base one day, how much would you think it costs to raid? 12 rockets? 16? 24? Well, if you guessed anything less than 40, you'd be wrong. And that's only to get TC and one loot room. I actually need your help finding the most efficient path to get all the loot and the TC. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but for now, let's take a look inside. Coming into the core, we have some quick drop storage up here. Separated by a 32 rocket from all direction bunker, we have our loot room halls. The first one being here on this side. Here we have some extra boxes and some auto turrets. Down in here we have our second loot room with our level 3 workbench and locker. If we come back up here we have our stability bunker entrance which leads to our TC slash main loot room wall. You can pass loot through this box and this section offers us three large boxes worth of very very secure storage space. I do want to make it clear that one of the main points of the video is to demonstrate the double bunker concept because I think it's really really strong. Before we get into the build, let me show you how the main parts of this base work. This first trick allows you to pass 5 full rows of loot through the wall. Spawning on the bag on the inside then allows you to grab the loot. You can choose to store the loot in one of these 3 boxes or to put it in the TC. The next part is a stability bunker which looks like this. This has the same amount of storage as the first one and although they look different they cost the same to raid, around 16 rockets each. This bunker works as follows. Place a half hole here and upgrade it to wood. Hard side needs to face you, you'll see why in a sec. Next you can upgrade this triangle to armor and it's sealed. Once finished you can spawn on the sleeping bag and soft side pick this wood wall. This opens the bunker. In this video we're going to take these two bunker concepts and combine them into one with the most efficient configuration we can find. This is the smallest I can find. Let me show you how the two bunkers are combined here. The first part is the stability bunker which you can seal like this. It's 16 rockets to get through this. If they do go through the first part, they are met by the second trick here, which is an additional 16 rockets to pass. It's 32 rockets to get into this room, so putting our main loot in here makes sense, and it's pretty much the point of the whole video. Remember, when using a stability bunker, always have one slot and a TC for wood, because the wood you use to seal the bunker will decay if you don't. Now I said it was 32 rockets to get into this TC room, that is from all directions as well. We're going to start with a square foundation. We'll build these three walls which allow us to place these shelves correctly. Next we'll place this box. Try to get it as close to the back wall as possible. We'll temporarily wall ourselves in so we can place our TC and fill it with mats. Just so everyone knows I have tested this trick on a vanilla server and it does still work as of the August update. Placing a TC also allows us to demolish these two walls. We'll put down this foundation and come to this side for the slanted roof. This will open up a gap for a large box. Placing this box can be a bit tricky, but it is possible. When using this trick, make sure the roof here is stone or you may not be able to place the box at all. We'll demolish this. And we want to make sure this box doesn't stick out too much. This is fine like this. If we come in here, we can now replace the two walls and add a ceiling. You can upgrade this section at a later time, but since it's a YouTube video, I'll upgrade it to its final state now, which is HQM. Next, we can throw down our sleeping bag. It should fit right here. We'll put a large box in this corner. If we stand on the bag, we can add a box to this corner. Remember to lock your boxes on TC, and this part is complete. I still can't get over how strong this 1x1 is, but let's add to it. We'll start on the side with the box. We'll add 4 triangle foundations at ground level and raise the 5th. We can put a triangle here, but before you add the raised foundation, be sure to place your sleeping bag. Then we can add the square. If we jump up here, we can see this will eventually become the stability bunker entrance. We'll continue with the footprint by adding this square and then the following foundation shown here. When you get to this point here, we can build two raised triangle foundations and a square. Since this is where our front entrance will be, we can mark it with some stairs, but I wouldn't use sheet metal on them. This base is not symmetric, so here is an aerial view if you're unsure of the steps. 
Starting at the front, we'll add a single door frame followed by three wall frames. This wall should face this way and this door frame like this. Next, we'll wall in the entire first floor. This will be done using all four walls. Also, sheet metal is the final material grade in the finished face, but you can upgrade all of this at your own pace. When you get to this point, you can add the two shop fronts along with the front door and double door. When placing these, you want the front door to open in and the double door to open this way, completing the airlock. This last door should open this way. Once again, here is an aerial view if needed. We can begin adding ceilings now, and we can start doing so from the front entrance and working our way around. I do want to say that this ceiling has multiple levels which will all later turn into honeycomb and storage space. It has to be built in exact steps, which is why I've been breaking it down into smaller ones. Now remember, the overall goal here is to seal the base as fast as possible. When you get to this point, we can add a couple of half walls here and two more on this side. Then we can jump up over to TC and add these walls. Here is an aerial view. We'll start off adding a few triangle tiles both here and up here. Above the TC we'll start to add some half walls. We'll put a ceiling here at this triangle so we can jump up. When adding this section make sure the hard sides are all facing the same way as shown in the video. We'll close it off and finish up with this final half wall. This is what the base looks like so far. We have a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. Now that our shell is complete, we'll start honeycombing our TC. We'll add this floor tile and upgrade everything to HQM. Keep in mind that adding this half wall will permanently block you from upgrading some of the pieces behind it. Next we'll be upgrading every triangle foundation that is right next to the 1x1 one one bunker in the middle. We'll also upgrade each corresponding ceiling tile. This part here will be the entrance to the stability bunker and can be constructed like this. Remember, you can upgrade all this at your own pace with what you have available. Next we'll stack these two half walls. Make sure the top half has the hard side facing you. We can demolish the bottom part. This part is the same as the last, but since we have a raised foundation under us, we can just place a half wall here. Now we can run around the back and finish the TC honeycomb. We'll upgrade this all to armored. I really want to know how everyone feels about this double HQM bunker concept, so if you have time to, let me know in the comments below. The final two upgrades are for these two raised foundations. The third one is visible from the outside, so leave that one sheet metal. Next we can put up all of our wall frames. Before you place one here, make sure to get this half wall floor here for the loot room. Then we can put the frames in all of these spots. In this spot, we'll also use a half wall and then we can put up the frame. We'll jump down, place this frame, and then mirror what we did for the other loot room. Now we can place the garage doors. There is a total of 8. When I place garage doors, I try to face the roll-up part towards the square if possible to conceal its location from the outside. If you're looking for a similar result, place the doors the same as shown in the video. Unfortunately, there is one that sticks out either way. These final two stop splash onto the bunker entrance. Once we're done, we can open up these and it's time to start filling in our loot rooms. We'll start off with the loot room that's in the left hallway since this is where our level 2 stuff will go. We'll start off by adding our 4 large boxes. We'll do the top first. You want the boxes to be as far back as possible while still having a decent sized gap between them. I really like this skin by the way, it matches my door really nice. The gap has to be big enough to fit this shotgun trap and the same on top. Next we'll start putting in our barbecues. There's four in each loot room. They, they can be a bit tricky to place, but they don't have to be perfect. 
I like to have the grill part facing the middle of the room, but that's for aesthetic purposes only. Now to be completely honest, I don't really like to work with barbecues and loot rooms. They always feel clunky to me, but they undeniably make terrific use of the small space they occupy. Now we'll add small boxes underneath these two barbecues and in front of the shotgun trap. On the bottom, we can also get away with one right here. The top has two boxes underneath the barbecues and one in front of the trap. But not the one here. If you put one there, it will block you from getting into the other boxes. And no, none of this sticks through the garage door. Our next step will be to place our level 2 workbench and a couple of inside furnaces. We'll place the level 2 as far back and as far left as possible. Then we can place our furnaces starting left to right. To get the third one in, you'll have to open the garage door. Remember to place a small box under the level 2. I almost forgot it in the video. Next we'll start on the other loot room. Once again, we want the boxes to be as far back as possible while maintaining a large enough gap in the middle for the shotgun traps. I do want to say that placing these boxes is much, much easier when the walls are stone. Everything seems to fit nice and snug. Now you may be wondering why I have upgraded all the wall frames to sheet metal. It has nothing to do with the raid cost. If you leave the frames stone, they can be seen from the outside pretty easily. Now we can start placing our four barbecues. They have a weird hitbox which seems much larger than what you actually see in the game. These don't have to be placed perfect, but if the legs hang over the edge a whole bunch, you may have to move the large boxes further back. If you do have a better loot room design that fits in a 1x1, one by, one, by all means, don't hesitate to use it. If you're looking for some really innovative loot room concepts, I would suggest Evil Worst Channel. They showcase what I would consider cutting edge building techniques. We'll finish up with placing our small boxes, remember to leave this one out. And that is our second loot room, once again nothing will stick out through the garage door. Last few items that are essential to a base is our level 3 workbench, which needs to fit in this left corner as best as possible. Remember to add your two small boxes underneath it using the rotating trick. If everything is placed right, then this locker will fit in here nice and snug. I'm going to show you a bunch of possible sleeping bag locations in the two wings of the base. You can leave some of these out or add more depending on your group size. I was able to get three in this space. Now you may choose to add extra boxes on these floors, which is totally fine. It may be advantageous to have a sleeping bag on each side of the base. Even though they would share the same cooldown timer, it does allow you to adjust depending on which side people are raiding you from. Loot rooms aside, we still have all this space to use. So what can we do with it? Well first, we could put a quick floor here and a triangle here. We put a couple of large boxes up here. Picking up this garage door makes jumping up here so, so much easier. Once we're up, we'll add in these two large boxes for quick storage. We can also add a large box and a small one on this edge here. It's viable to have some more boxes in these two spaces, but they also make for a good auto turret spot. We'll put two since they don't need electricity. We can break this. Remember to put the garage door back up and I think we've made good use of this space. And that leads us into my favorite part of Rust, offline raiding. Wait, I mean. It's my base and I'm online, so technically it's an online raid. I'm gonna show you how to raid the base.
four C4 and 32 rockets. This will give you the tool cupboard and this loot room. Now this is pretty damn expensive for a base this size. To copy what I just showed on the video will run you about 53,600 sulfur. This doesn't take into consideration you can move loot. There's also a wall off spot at the end of each loot room hallway. And look, this loot room hasn't even been touched. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I need your help to find the cheapest path to take all the loot from the space. In the meantime, thank you for watching the video. I apologize for my uploading schedule being a bit scattered this past month. That will not be a thing anymore. See you in the next one.